Hello and welcome to another V-Ray feature short demonstration. In this video we will go over the V-Ray Sun and Sky system, the different sky models and the parameters that allow for fine tuning the Sun and Sky. The V-Ray Sun and Sky system is meant to reproduce the real life Sun and Sky environment of our planet. The system itself consists of a directional light source to serve as the Sun and a procedurally generated high dynamic range texture to serve as the sky in our scene. Both of those components are dynamic in a sense that they change depending on the position of the sun, just like in real life. Let's take a closer look at the sunlight. Its intensity and light color depend on the angle it makes with the horizon. If the sun is perpendicular to the ground at midday for instance, it will have maximum intensity and it will shine with bright yellow color. But if the sun is closer to sunrise or sunset position then its intensity would be much milder and the light color would differ as well. The intensity of the sun could be manipulated further by using the intensity multiplier parameter. Another parameter we can tweak is the size multiplier. By increasing the size, we'll make the visible sun bigger that won't affect the light intensity at all. Instead, it would only affect the softness of the shadows it casts. Let's examine the V-Ray sky component next. As mentioned earlier, the sky isn't simply a background image. It's a procedurally generated HDR texture that changes dynamically depending on the position of the sun. Its purpose is to complement the V-Ray sunlight by generating an environment with matching intensity and color. When creating a V-Ray Sun, you'll be prompted if you would like a V-Ray Sky texture to be added automatically for you. By default, the sky's parameters are linked to the V-Ray Sunlight, but they can be overridden for achieving different looks. If we have global illumination enabled in our scene, the V-Ray Sky would affect its intensity and color. We could fine-tune our sky appearance by tweaking the turbidity parameter. It determines the amount of dust in the air. Smaller values would result in less dust particles, therefore a blue clear sky. Higher values would shift the sky towards yellow and orange as you would get in a polluted urban environment for example. By changing the ozone parameter we can affect the color of the light emitted by the sun. There are multiple ways for the Sky HDR texture to be generated. Each one is based on a different Sky model. There are four Sky models to choose from in the V-Ray Sun and Sky system. Each one would result in slightly different outcome. In the pre model, the intensity of the sunlight and the brightness of the Sky texture are linked together. On another hand, the CIE model has those controls separated and includes modes for a clear or an overcast sky. As a version 3.3 of V-Ray, there is a new sky model called Hosek, which improves on the previous ones. Let's split up the screen and load each sky model playing the same sunrise to sunset animation. This way we could clearly see the difference in each of them. Additionally, in Service Pack 3 of V-Ray for 3DS Max, a new option called Ground Albedo has been included. It controls the general diffuse color of the ground. Let's load up a more complex scene so we can see the new Hossack Sky model in action. As a version 3.3 of V-Ray, there is a new fast to render environment fog type of effect called Aerial Perspective. When used in conjunction with the Sun and Sky system, we could achieve more natural results. In this short tutorial, we have covered the V-Ray Sun and Sky system together with all the different sky models available and essential parameters for fine control such as turbidity, ozone, size and intensity multiplier. I hope you have found this video useful and helpful. Make sure you check out more V-Ray featured videos. Thank you for watching.